Hi there, Mark Vergeer here. I'm on the iPad, so sound quality probably isn't the best. Uh, I've got a package, and it's actually this. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I was crazy enough to uh, to back uh, this uh, this. Basically, this is a single board computer and a USB joystick. You uh, are able to hook up uh, other USB game pads. Uh, the the um, the, the pros to using this Competition Pro, um, uh, Competition Pro, um, how do you say that, facsimile, is actually that it actually features uh, some extra buttons uh, that allow you to use the keyboard because this is about half the size of, an, of a real, uh, of a real uh, Commodore 64, uh, but the keyboard is just fake. And uh, it's actually very well done. Uh, the only thing that's lacking is actually the uh, the special characters on the front side of the keys. Um, there have been a ton of videos uh, doing the unboxing. Actually, the 8-bit guy also did a review on it. But I guess that was really an American-centric uh, review um, from a guy who doesn't like arcade games. Because actually this... Well, this actually features a ton of great arcade games, very uh, European uh, games, perhaps, um, and it looks stellar in real life. I may actually, if you, if you guys want to, I may actually do an update video, you know, hooking it up and showing you some of the gameplay. But the gameplay, it's emulation. It's not FPGA, but it's emulation. But it's spot on with us, uh, with an emulator uh, specifically tied to uh, to this system. It will actually be possible to use your own games on it because you can use a USB stick, uh, put it in one of the two USB plugs, and if you name uh, the, the the file the D64 file with a certain name, it'll be uh, able to mount this. A future uh, firmware updates may actually allow a USB stick to be read and some sort of menu to be present. Um, if you want to use the keyboard, you can use a virtual keyboard on the screen. Um, if this actually proves to be successful, they will actually feature a full-size version with this with the working keyboard. Now, that actually would be awesome. Um, I'll show you on the back some of the... Uh, yeah, it's a really nice box. Uh, it's somewhat reminiscent of the, uh, of the original box, I think. Uh, there's also a manual inside, which actually has a similar... Uh, front uh, to the uh, to the original uh, manual. Um, it features Armalite, Boulder Dash, California Games, Creatures, Impossible Mission, Nebulous, Nodes of Your Shot, uh, Paradoid, Robin of the Wood, Speedball, Spin Dizzy, Euridium, and you can actually program it in basic. The full list is Alley Cat, Anarchy, Armalite, Avenger, uh, Battle Valley, Boulder Dash, Bounder, California Games, Chip, Channels, Confusion, Creatures, Cyberdyne Warrior, Cybernoid, The Fighting Machine, Cybernoid to the Revenge, Deflector, Everyone's a Wally, Firebird, Gribbley's Day Out, Hawkeye, Heartland, Herobotics, Highway Encounter, Hunter's Moon, Hysteria, Impossible Mission, Impossible Mission 2, IO, Jumpman, Mega Apocalypse, uh, Mission AD, Monty Mole, Monty on the Run, Nebulous, Netherworld, Nobby the Yardvark, mm, that's a that's, um, I believe, uh, an oils, oils well type of game. Nose of Your Shot, Paradroid, Pit Stop 2, Ranarama, Ramen of the Wood, Rubicon, Skate uh, Crazy, School Days, Snare, Speedball, Speedball 2, Brutal Deluxe, Spin Dizzy, Star Poise, Star Paws, uh, sorry, Steel, uh, Street uh, Sports Baseball, Summer Games 2 with Summer Games 1, Super Cycle, Temple of Espy Trilogy, Arc of Your Shot, Thing on a Spring, Thing Bounces Back, Trailblazer, Cosmic Causeway, Trailblazer 2, Uchimata, Uridium, Who Dares Wins 2, Winter Games, World Games, and Zinaps. A lot of Houston games, and I think it's an excellent lineup. And uh, if you guys want to do, want me to do an unboxing and want me to show you some gameplay, I will. But there's a ton of videos out there that feature actually this. And uh, so, you know, there's really no point in me showing that, I guess. But I thought it would be nice to just show you that I actually got this. <laughs> Anyways, Mark, 
signing off and I'll be back with a video soon. Well, you know, I may actually, um, some people on Facebook already uh, have seen this. Um, my my uh, retro gaming system uh, running Windows XP actually died. And uh, for the <laughs> multiple times, there's have been, there have been multiple motherboards in it, uh, ranging from 486s, Pentiums, uh, AMD K2s. Uh, the last one was a Core 2 Duo. Uh, basically, uh, there's some, there is something wrong with this case because it attracts lighting, it shorts and whatever. So I got rid of the case. Um, and I do have a whole set of, uh, of CPUs over there, ranging from a Core i5, uh, fourth generation, third generation, second generation. I actually have a Core i7 systems, uh, chips. Um, I, I got some memory. I've got four sticks of 16, what is it? DDR3. Um, four sticks and I got a couple of really cheap motherboards coming my way I've got two of these parallel ports uh, serial auto sorry not parallel serial auto cables this is my GTX 750 Ti uh, a Sharkoon case basically a similar case to this one I'm going to revive my retro gaming PC uh, that is <laughs> uh, yeah, I will. Uh, the, one of the motherboards that's coming my way features one of the second generation, uh, could, could house one of the second generation i7s, which isn't the fastest, you know, really isn't the fastest. Um, um, it, it runs on a one, what is it, 1156 socket, I believe. Um, the RAM I have will feature will will run on it, but it features next to the serial auto ports. It features a parallel port, parallel ID port, which allows me to hook up my DVD, old DVD drives, and my ZIP hundred disk. I'm still considering uh, to be to use that, but I also could opt to use a Core i five on an eleven fifty socket, which probably is a lot faster than the Core i seven. Um, on the 1156 socket. With these Intel sockets, it's actually quite a bit weird because the higher the number, not necessarily means that it's a better socket. Actually, the 1156 is a bit of a troubled platform. The 1150 is a better platform and the 1155 is be before that. But 1155, 1150 is, you know, pretty decent. You can, you can actually still pair a, a GTX 1050, 1060, 1070 to it without the CPU bottlenecking the graphics card. So pretty decent gaming performance. So I actually, I could, <laughs> I could make it more than it is. Um, I also got a, a cheap 1150 motherboard, a gigabyte one, new, unused. It'll take about 20 days to get here. But uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've gotten a couple of motherboards to be paired with those CPUs, and I'm, I'm considering, uh, I'm considering, uh, yeah, building a retro gaming PC, or, or, I will turn this into my Linux box because I sort of, I sort of, uh, <laughs> I'm sort of without a Linux box right now. I mean, I did image the system, but uh, I actually I made made it into a dedicated emulation PC running Windows, running Windows 10, which is actually cool, but I'm actually lacking my Linux box. And uh, I could actually turn this into a pretty decent Linux box if I go for the Core i5-1150 socket, uh, 16 gigabyte. I could, I could tr throw in all the 16 gigs and uh, use the 750 GTX or Ti a graphics card and hook it up to uh, yeah as a, as a third computer to one of the uh, to these uh, uh, to these monitors. Um, what would you guys do? Use the the uh, uh, socket 1156 Core i7 with the mother with the older motherboard that allows me to use 
parallel IDE interfaces and, and, and basically uh, make this into a very, very, very high-end Windows XP machine and install a lot of good old game games on it, my old disks with no CD patches and uh, use um, a glide wrapper for my Voodoo 2 uh, or Voodoo 3 uh, glide games could do that because Windows really uh, does with DirectX it really it doesn't run the games too fast so it would turn it into a very high-end Windows XP machine but probably the, the hardware that I have is overkill a serious overkill uh, it's cheap stuff that I got uh, some some stuff I got as a gift from 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 people uh, certain things I had to, uh, I bought real cheap. There's I'm still waiting for parts. I did buy a new power supply and a new case, and the rest, memory, and the rest is all yeah very cheap or second hand. Um, yeah, I'm really wondering what to do. Uh, this system actually uh, is a system that uses the uh, Oculus. Basically, <laughs> that is a VR system. I can tolerate the Oculus a bit more, a bit better than the PlayStation VR, but still is not my thing. So, yeah, I have a few PCs too much, perhaps. I should, I could actually give it away, but I, I really am looking forward to building uh, a newer system. There's a cooler coming my way, uh, the Cryo Rig cooler. I bought that second hand. So I've got three of these cases now all with pretty decent hardware, 1150 CPU, so that's 6th generation perhaps, or 5th generation Core i7s for the most part. Um, and I, yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got an extra one. So I could turn this into the third uh, 1150 socket motherboard with a decent amount of RAM. Uh, I I could turn it into a streaming PC, editing, video editing PC, uh, retro gaming PC, uh, or my Linux box. And of course, I can I can actually do it all. I mean, I could have it multi-boot, put three big drives in it and have it multi-boot and make it do everything. I'm really curious what you guys would do. I'm not spending a ton of money. I mean, I've, I've got... Uh, <laughs> I've got a shitload of drives. Oh, right. Over there. I've got a shitload of drives. Um, hard drives. So, uh, you know, I, I could whip up, put together uh, a system. I could actually do multiple systems. I've gotten quite a few graphics cards still. I could, you know, uh, just these are four, four gigabyte sticks. You know, I could break them up not use them all in one machine um, yeah the, the speed on this it's um, it's 1333 which basically is a bit too slow for the core i5 uh, uh, 1150 socket machine because that actually can take up to 1600 but I don't have that uh, so it might actually be overkill to throw it in I, I actually I, I could I could <laughs> This probably is very boring to a lot of people, but I actually, I could use the Core i5 1150 in my Lenovo Think Center because that actually is also an 1150 socket, but that has uh, an i3 in it. And I could actually take out the i3 and put the 1150 uh, i5 in there and make it into a really fast uh, desktop system uh, it has a, 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 an NVIDIA uh, 1030 graphics card in it. Uh, basically, the power supply can't take anything more. I could do that, but I turn it into a Linux box and actually uh, make this into my state-of-the-art Windows XP machine, like the overkill Uber Uber. Uh, because um, I believe the Core i5-1156 generation that basically was from 2005 or something. Windows XP was still relevant and uh, back then. Well, perhaps, perhaps not entirely, but 
I mean, it was a, I believe if I get the motherboard, it, 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 it does feature Windows XP drivers, uh, the, 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 the NVIDIA GTX 750 Ti will have Windows XP drivers. Uh, so basically I could turn it into, into this into a huge, fast Windows XP machine. But yeah, I, mean, I don't need, I don't need 16 gigabytes. It will, it will, it will not recognize it. It will only recognize four gigabytes because it's a 32 bit operating system, but I could throw it all in and have it as a multi-boot configuration. I mean, I could have it boot Linux. I could also have it boot Windows XP. And I also could have it boot um, um, Windows 10. And I actually, I could turn it into an hack, in hacking torch. I mean, I've been doing hacking torches. Um, I believe this, these motherboards actually will be able to, but then the uh, the GTX 750 Ti will not probably will not be the best. But yeah, I could even turn it into a hacking tosh. What would you guys do? This is just you know surplus hardware. I'm you know it's I I want to do something crazy with it, and I really am curious what you guys would do with it. If you have any suggestions, please put them down below in the comments. And uh, yeah, this is just a very ad hoc video. Uh, low quality, you know. I, I'm I'm not using this camera. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm. You know, I just felt like like uh, like doing a video. So yeah, this is you know the the quality of my of my videos on my channel will vary from time to time because I I will use different hardware. But uh, yeah, anyways, Mark signing off. I, I really need to get some dinner because it's it's. It's 7, <laughs> 7 p.m. and I'm actually quite, quite hungry. So yeah, Mark signing off and I'll be back with another video soon.